Hey everyone, this is the Sonic Blender on CILU Radio 102.7 FM in Thunder Bay or on the web at www.luradio.ca. For the next half hour, we're going to be listening to a conversation I had recently with Scott Lanaway about his new record, Mergers and Acquisitions. We'll also hear some tracks from that record. So without further delay, here's my interview with Scott Lanaway on LU 102. Somebody I met a few years ago said that uh, they said it's like folktronic or something, and uh, I don't know. It's just been kind of this natural uh, thing for me because I'm I'm really drawn to all the sounds that I'm pulling into the music. It's just a natural a natural product of that. But I'm also interested in that that fusion. It's it's a really interesting thing. Also, the way the songs are written, they can come from two different directions. It could come from a chord progression and a melody developed on um, a guitar, or it could come from messing around with uh, electronic sounds and, and beats, and, and then fusing kind of elements of the other side into it in, in the final mix. And actually, overdubbing for the songs was interesting because I, would, I had access to so many different sounds, I would get a lot of different ideas and try to bring them in. And it was like a kid in a candy factory. Yeah. It's like if you have too much candy and you start to feel sick, like I felt that way with some of the mixes because I, I was trying so many things um, that sometimes I would come back a couple of weeks later and, and sort of start actually muting tracks to find the, the core of it again that I, that I was going for. But I had so much fun trying, um, trying different things to you know, achieve the final result. But I have this one um, sound generator called um, Absence by Native Instruments, and it's sort of like a very cinematic type thing, and it's probably used, I'm sure it's used in a lot of TV and film soundtracks, and I really, really, I go for that stuff because it's so atmospheric, so, you know, sometimes I might have a, a chorus or a verse or a bridge or something, and I'd be looking for some, some something else, some other flavor to add, and I might go in on a Saturday to work for five or six hours and then find that I spent three or four hours basically just lost in listening to and experimenting with and tweaking all these different sounds and then walk out of the studio and think, what did I actually get done, you know? Because there's just so much choice. So, yeah. you know, that's the other thing I've been thinking is that perhaps on my next one, I'll, I'll try limiting my, my palate and see what happens. Yeah, or to be able to create with less, so definitely a skill uh, nonetheless, or a, good way, a different way of challenging yourself. Yeah, exactly, and 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 just try different things. Like um, for Christmas, my sister lives in in Peru, and she's been there for like seven years. And she brought me this uh, instrument. It's like, a, and of course, now that I'm talking to you, I can't remember the name, but. Um, but um, you sit on it and it's like a, a wood block and it's got a hole in the back like a bass drum would have. And you basically tap it with your palm in different areas and it gives a really different um, tonal qualities. And you can almost make it sound like a, a bass and snare. And it's really interesting, you know? So yeah. yeah, sometimes I think about if I just kind of, you know, limited the palette, you know, it would be interesting. And, and maybe it would be easier to react to a record of 13 songs too if, if all the songs sounded a little bit closer to each other i don't know the other song that stood out to me that i wanted to ask about is 1333 is that a historical based song like i'm, I'm having a hard time with the <laughs> the, the metaphors and the illusions especially when i threw some yeah. video and it's all the negative uh <laughs> Totally. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It ended up coming out like pretty weird. I know, and I should have published some some more information about the backstory on the website or something. Put more uh, effort into that. But yeah, basically, um, that one was like I was obsessed with this this like hypnotic um, you know beat that I had coming up with this really dark. Um, sound and it was just kind of really kind of like you know drawing me in and at the same time you know lyrically i mean i do i do have an interest in in history in general i always get interested if there are documentaries on or for this song literally i went on wikipedia and i had this original idea to try to make uh, four songs from four different uh, years where the song would be based around um themes that were pertinent to those times so for this one i ended up just doing this one but um i went on on Wikipedia and I, I literally spent an hour reading about everything that happened in the year 1333 and I was so blown away by it.
I also I spend a lot of time thinking about time and space as, as well, and um, and this sort of tied into that for me. I was just thinking about the passage of time and 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 all of these things that happened in the year 1333. You know, started to feel very real to me as I imagined them. So all the verses are describing historical events from the year 1333. And then the chorus is basically about how we're all just、uh, a part of history, and it's maybe、uh, some people might find that a bit depressing or sobering, but I, I get really、um, excited thinking about about these ideas about how incredible、uh, that is. And so the video then was really—it、uh, was just fairly,、um, you know, obviously, like pretty、uh, low-budget video. But I just liked the juxtaposition of this technological human endeavor、uh, with these references to history,、um, and I just kind of liked the way that felt. And then, to my surprise,、um, much music picked it up for the wedge. So、uh, that was a great thing. Lately,、uh, I've been、uh, my head has been more in、uh, you know like the 1530s because、uh, my fiance and I have got into finally watching、uh, the Tudors, so which of course is sensationalized soap opera, but nevertheless it got me back on Wikipedia and researching stuff and learning about the era and just kind of thinking about the reality for human beings at the time and how civilization has、uh, progressed and still progresses and、uh, totally fascinating. This is your second release, following 2006's、uh, Answering Machine Diaries. Is is that whole the the mindset, I guess, of of kind of releasing yourself from the overthink?、Um, did that did that make it a lot significantly easier, or did it just change it differently? Can you talk a little bit about maybe the difference between those two records? Um, yeah. Well, with、uh, Answering Machine Diaries, that was my first time.、Um, Doing something、uh, on my own, so it was a really new experience, and、uh, I was recording it in a different way. I, I had gear that was、um, not quite as nice and and a bit rougher. I mean, it was fine for my purposes, but I was sort of you know introducing myself more into the production side of making music and exploring ideas. Also, just thinking in terms of what music is. Is supposed to be and what it's supposed to accomplish. It felt really nice to let go of、um, the the need to you know package it into something that is sellable or understandable and really just kind of go after the ideas and not worry so much. In doing that, you kind of marginalize it a bit because it's harder to describe or talk about, especially when the songs are a bit more perhaps varied from one another.